sent his son from heaven to earth, from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, all this for you and I. And that's a good God. So today we're going to talk about what the Bible describes as the principal thing. And that's where we're going to go into the book of Proverbs. In a previous message we talked about how God formed the earth by wisdom and by understanding he established the heavens. So this alone tells us that wisdom and understanding are partners together. And this is what the father wants to instill in his son. As we're going to read in chapter 4 of the book of Proverbs. I'm just going to read a few verses for you. And I'm going to start at, chapter, at uh, verse 1. And it says, Hear ye children the instructions of a father. And attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my Lord. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also. And he said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. And then he says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, I want you to get understanding. Understand. Hallelujah. Understand. He wants us to get wisdom. And with all our getting, he wants us to get understanding. I'll just pray for you for just a second, and then we'll get into the message. You know, just a few, but we can still stand for the prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stand, and I'll just pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Father, we seek your wisdom, your knowledge, and your understanding. And since knowledge is easy to him that understands, oh God, help us to increase our understanding. Yes, For a soul without knowledge is not good, the Bible says. Your word declares in Hosea 4, 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Precious Lord, help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we may walk in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. We ask that you open the hearts of the listeners and enable them to hear and receive your word in Jesus' name. Okay, so you may start. I prepared this message especially for the kids and the teenagers, but we don't have too many here today, but even for the two, even for the two, God is good. Today we're going to take a good, hard look at what the Father has to say to His Son. So I want you to sit back, be blessed, and I'm going to stand in proxy for the Father concerning this very important matter called wisdom. Now the father addresses his son as he always does. First of all, he lets him know that he is his son and that he is 
is father. And this is something we as fathers ought to do. When we, when we come before our children, I do it. You want to call your son. I, I call him son. My son. My son. That lets them know that I am their father. When I call them like that. I can call them by name. That's to let them know that I know who they are. But when I call him son, it means that I want to share something intimate. I want to get close to him. So I call him son. The father wants to get his undivided attention as he teaches him these very important things about life. He says to him, listen my son to the instructions of a father and put everything you've got into knowing what it means to have understanding. The doctrine that, I, that I'm giving you is good doctrine. And whatever you do, do not forsake my Lord. The Father lets him know right away that the things that I'm going to tell you, the commands, they're good doctrine. That's very, very important. He said, you see, son, it's like this. I was my father's son, tender and only begotten in the sight of my mother. Not a spoiled child, but it sounds like that. And he said, don't get me wrong. He, he, he wants him. He said, don't get me wrong. Your mother loves you more than anything in the world. And so do I. So he's making the platform really a level platform. Your mother loves you, and I love you also. He says, but, but you know, I want you to know that my father taught me also. This is a generational thing he's trying to instill in the boy. And he spoke into my life and he said to me, Son, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. So from the very beginning, just as God would say to us, I give you a commandment, it's the only one I'm going to give that has a promise attached to it. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long mm -hmm. on the earth. It's the same thing that he's saying. You see, the father has learned God's ways from his father. And now he wants to pass these instructions on to his son. Amen. And that's, that's the way it ought to be. Bless the Lord. My father, he has passed things on to me which were good, mm -hmm. and now that I have my children, I want to pass that on to them. It is the good and natural thing to do. That's the Lord. God, God wants true <coughs> godliness, you see, and commitment to be taught by the parents. Mm -hmm. And they can do this by the examples they provide in the home. Christianity begins at home. Yes, sir. So whatever we do in the house as parents, the, the children are going to suck this out. They are like sponge. And they're going to go out and do as they see the parents do. We are not, and this is important, we are not to pass the responsibility on to the church. And a lot of, a, a lot of parents do this. They've got their children. And what they do is they say, well, you know, we... You know, we don't have to worry about it. Because Pastor Denton, he'll come pick them up. And he'll teach them whatever he knows, and then he'll send them back. And then we'll leave it till next Sunday. In the meantime, they, they just do whatever they want. You know? And that's the way it is. Now the church, mind you, I'm not knocking the church. I'm not knocking what the pastor would do. The church has a responsibility. It has a role to play. Even though Christianity begins at home, the church does have a role to play. That's why God has appointed teachers and preachers and pastors. Yes, sir. You know, from a child we must be taught love. Amen. From a child, you have to be taught love. And in some homes today, there is no love. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to be taught love? Thank God for the church. <laughs> If at least they could get into church, they would find some kind of knowledge about love. 
and that knowledge comes from God because God is it. So by now, you may have noticed that the mother is not in the picture. Funny, you know, he, the father is talking. But see, that's because it's a it's man to man talk. There are times when the mother will speak to the son without the presence of the father, and in her conversations, she will teach him the fine techniques and the things that make a woman happy. You see, father, the father is a man to man thing that's going on here. He's going to teach him man stuff. And then when he gets with his mother, she's going to teach him the things. That a woman is so delicate. And, and we men sometimes are too rough and too quick and we just want to get on with business. But the mother is going to teach the son how to respond to a woman. But today is like Father's Day with the boys. So the mother is out of the picture. And this is what he says. He says, son, I want you to get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget my words and don't ever swerve from them. Don't forsake her and she will preserve you, love her, and she will keep you. The father portrays wisdom as a woman. He's calling her she. And just as it was good, or rather, it was not good for a man to be alone. And God made him a woman to be his helpmate. In the same way, wisdom is portrayed here as that woman. And the son, perhaps now he's a young man, he's got a whole lot to her. Her name is Wisdom. <laughs> He's instructed to love her and to cherish her. Man's got to cherish his woman. God gave him the woman to be a healthy woman. Not to abuse her. Not to overwork her. But she's going to help him. And he has to encourage her. He has to understand her. So the father is teaching the son a whole lot of the wisdom of God is essential for a meaningful and godly life. Therefore, we must seek it above all things. Wisdom, the wisdom of God. That's the, that's the primary, the key thing. If we want to have a meaningful relationship with God, we've got to have this wisdom. Yes, sir. There's a wisdom that comes from the earth. There's an earthly wisdom which is sensual. But the wisdom that comes from God, that's a heaven, that's the wisdom that God wants us to operate in. <coughs> that's the kind of wisdom. <coughs> a personal relationship with God is the first step in obtaining true wisdom. I'll say that again. Amen. A personal relationship with God My Lord. is the first step so if you want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, <laughs> exactly, that's it. You've got to have that relationship. You see, and then you can get this wisdom simply by asking God, who gives to all men liberally. In James one, it says, if you lack wisdom, you can ask God, yes. and He gives liberally. But you've got to ask in faith, in faith. not doubting. Amen. You've got to come forward, Lord, I need wisdom. I need the wisdom to do this or to do that. I have a situation before me, oh God. I need the wisdom. How should I handle this? Amen. God is going to tell you. He must say, how, how, how can God tell me this? He speaks to your spirit, man. So that's where we have that first relationship with God, if you want to get that wisdom. You see? So let me ask this question. Do you think that God would give wisdom to anybody? That's, 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 if, if the heathen, if the unbeliever comes and asks God for wisdom, God's just going to give anybody wisdom? God is, as far as I'm concerned, God is not just giving anybody his wisdom like it's nothing. So the question is, would you give gifts to your enemies? People who want to hurt you, you're not going to do that. 
if somebody is on your side, then you would empower them. God will empower all those that he appoints. Amen. So he's not just going to spread his wisdom out so people know how to destroy him and destroy his people and destroy his church. God is not going to do that. You've got to have the fear of the Lord. You've got to have a relationship with God. And then you can ask for that wisdom. You see. So the father realizing that he has gotten the attention of his son. He puts a lid on the subject of wisdom just for a little while because he wants to talk to him about some other things. It's not only about wisdom, but... but you know, before he does that, he makes the statement. He says, son, listen and listen very carefully to what I have to say. Pay attention. Pay attention. Just like God spoke to Jeremiah. He wants his attention. You see, your life may depend on it. Wisdom, he says, is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all your understanding, with all you get, I want you to get understanding. You've got to have the understanding to work with the wisdom. Wisdom in the book of Proverbs, it says it brings life. And in fact, it is life. Wisdom, as described in the book of Proverbs, brings life and it is life. If you put all the desires and wishes of people in a box, you shake it up and you, and you just scatter it out there. And you take it out. What would you see? You're going to see all the people are saying, I want to live and have a good life. This is what people want. They want to live and they want to have a good life. But a lot of us don't really know how to do it. Some people think that having a good life means having a lot of money. Some people think that having a, a, a position, a high position in high places, mm -hmm. but it's not that. It's having a relationship with Christ, with yes. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's, Glory. that's Glory. what it's all about. And that's what the Father is teaching His Son. How to live and have a good life. You know? And all of us want to have a good life. All of us want to have a good life. In Proverbs 4.10 he says, Listen, O my son, and receive what I'm saying to you, and you will have a long life. The words of God, Jesus said in John 6.6.3, 6, uh, The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. They are life. They are life. 